day, it would be something in these end times that, that, that launches were around the world. Mm -hmm. Pray this in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have all fallen short of His glory, His standard, His holiness, His righteousness. We've fallen short of it, Newcastle. And the reality is most of us were just not bothered. We're not bothered. But to those of you who are bothered, to those of you who don't look at me like I'm a fool and think I'm an idiot for doing this, He wants, to, he wants you to know to come to Him today. The message is, yes, we have fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, we've all sinned. Yes, we've all done it. All have fallen short of the glory of God. We're so concerned about equality. Well, all of us have equally fallen short of the glory of God. There you go. And there's all equally a way out of that. And Jesus came to show you the face of the invisible God. He came to pay your wages of your sin. And the wages of sin is death. And there's two places, right? There's two places where you can spend eternity. One is in the presence of Almighty God. In His wonderful, beautiful presence where there'll be no more pain, where there'll be no more suffering. You know the stuff that we want now? Well, that's the promise for them. No more pain, no more suffering, no more death, no more sickness. That is the promise for them, not now. But because of sin in this fallen world, if we are not forgiven, we're going to go to a place where the wrath of God will be poured out. Where the wrath of God, that terrible, fearful wrath of God will be poured out. And being a good person isn't going to help. You need to be forgiven. You need to have everything washed away to be made new in the sight of God. Behaviour modification is not going to do it, guys. And that is good news. Because you can be in heaven with the Father or hell away from the love of God. What's it going to be? How do we go to heaven? How can we have a certainty? How can we have hope? How can we have love right now? How can we have joy? How can we shrug our shoulders at the world and just say, if I win, I win. If I live, I live. If I die, I die. I go to be with the Father in heaven. Jesus Christ, catch me when I say this. Jesus Christ, win and die for every single one of you. So if you would call upon the name of the Lord today, you would be saved. Not might be saved, not could be saved will be saved and this is the good news of the gospel and we need some good news man we need some hope and it's a certainty we need some faith not put in yourself not put in man made ideas and theologies but in the true one true living God and the face of the living God the son of the living God is Jesus Christ and he calls us all to repent and believe in him because he came and he died and he rose again on the third day so that we could be forgiven Amen. that is the good news that is the good news because Newcastle we need forgiven we do all have fallen and short of the glory all have sinned but Jesus Christ came so that all could be forgiven if you would come to him today so Newcastle I ask you once again as you always do what's it going to be? Who is your God? Who is your Savior? Because if you say, your, say yourself, you're going to have an eternity in hell away from the Father. But if you say, Jesus Christ, save my soul. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I have sinned. I've fallen short. Help me. I recognize it. I know what I've done in the dark and I want to bring it to your glorious light. If you can say that today in Newcastle, you will be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. There is only one God, and there is only one way for you to know truly God. It's by knowing Jesus Christ. And when I say that you must know Jesus Christ, I'm not speaking about the Jesus, the secular Jesus that you watch on television, that you've seen on films that you probably study at school. I'm talking about the living God.
2,000 years ago, God became a human being and he came to this world for two main reasons. He came to reveal who is the Father. Jesus said, if you look to me, you have seen the Father. Do you want to know the will of God? Look to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Bible says that he is the perfect image of God. When you look to Jesus, you will know the will of God. When you look to Jesus Christ, you will understand the character of God. You understand the goodness of God, but also you understand the truth of God. Jesus said, I am the way. There are many ways to London, but I can tell you there's only one way to heaven. Yes, bro. You can go by car, you can go through bus, train, Amen. but to heaven, there's only one person that can take you, is Jesus Christ. He's the only one. He said, I am the way. He's not one of the many ways. And here in Newcastle, we are here proclaiming and preaching the gospel. And people are saying, why are you not inside a church preaching? I tell you, because there are many churches in this city that are not proclaiming the true gospel. There are many churches in this city who are full of false prophets and false teachers who are not proclaiming the truth of the gospel. But the Bible says that what you've heard in secret, shout in the housetops. And that's why we are here. We are proclaiming this message because our God is the living God. And He rose again 2,000 years ago to prove to me and you that even death can be conquered. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, they have eternal hope. This means that if I die now, if I die today, tomorrow, I know I am with my Savior. Amen. But you may probably think, I'm a good person. God will accept me in heaven. I have a place in heaven. I am a good person. But let me tell you something. We have that big screen over there. Imagine if we start putting on that screen everything that you did in your life for everyone to watch here in Newcastle. I think you would be ashamed of yourself. You know why? Because you are just like me. We are all sinners. And we all deserve the wrath of God because we fall astray from His ways. But the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus, He's proclaiming His good message and He says on verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God has destined His kingdom to those who lack His kingdom, those who recognize that I need God. It's not about how good you are, what you do. You know what's the difference between biblical Christianity and all the other false religions in this world? The difference is, is that every religion will require you to follow a setup of rules and be a good person so that you can deserve heaven. But what the Bible tells us is that no one deserves heaven. That's the difference from Christianity, from the false religions of this world. Because it's not about what you do, but it's who you trust. The moment you put your trust in Jesus Christ, then you have the guarantee that you can have eternal life. Let me tell you something. The true Jesus is only revealed in the Holy Scriptures. You can, you can believe whatever you want, that doesn't make true. I can believe that God is Michael Jackson. That doesn't change anything. It doesn't change, it doesn't make true. You can believe whatever you want. But let me tell you something, one day you're gonna have to face the God of the universe. You're gonna have to face the righteous judge one day. And you're gonna have to give account. And what will you say on that great day? Will you say that you are a good person? I can tell you, His answer to you in advance. He will say to you, there is no one good but me. There is no one good but God. You know, how can you be saved? The only way you can escape that great judgment, the only way you can escape that wrath, is by falling in the mercy of the judge. Because the only way you can be pure of heart, is if Him wash your heart with His blood. And I can tell you, 2,000 years ago, He bled and died on that cross. For what reason? He was not a political revolutionist. He was not there to make a, a social revolution. 
No, he was doing a spiritual revolution in this world, bringing truth. Two things that Jesus did when he came to this world. First, he revealed the face of God. When you look to Jesus Christ, you know God. Do you want to know the love of God? Look to Jesus Christ. Do you want to know the truth of God? Look to Jesus Christ. Do you want to know who is God? Look to Jesus. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. What kind of life have you been living? There's only one that can give you two, true life. And what life is that? It's not 60, 30, 40, or 100 years in this earth. I'm talking about eternal life. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, I and the Father will come and we will dwell in him. You can today become a new creation. That's a promise of God. Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Lord over everything, he's Lord over coronavirus, he's Lord over this country, he's Lord over this world. And we declare that this world needs Jesus. Many people will say, I don't need Jesus, but you don't realize how desperately we all need Jesus. You see, many of us think about life and how short it is. We're all going to die one day. And I ask you, in Newcastle, where are you going to go once you die? Do you think you're going to go to heaven? Are you sure about it? You see, because forever is a long time to be wrong. And the word, the Bible says that it's appointed for man to die once, and after that judgment, we we'll stand before God. When we die, and we'll have to give an account of everything we've ever done. He says, God is so holy, God is so good and so right, he will not let rapists go, he will not let murderers go, but he's so good beyond that, he will not let liars go, he will not let thieves go. See, God is a good judge, but he's also rich in mercy. See, God, it, the Bible says we are storing up wrath every day when we sin. You see, it's no good trying to change now we've already sinned because the bible says that all have fallen short to the measure of the glory of god no one is good not one person is good and we're like the kid ourselves and say i'm a good person not as bad as my neighbor but when you stand before god you, your neighbor won't be next to you you'll be standing before god alone and you'll have to give an account of everything you've ever have to done and that terrifies me newcastle that you will have to stand before a holy god the Bible says it's a fearful thing to stand to be in the hands of the living God. And God is real and we're so much we try to kid ourselves and say God doesn't exist. That everything is just an accident, that everything just happens by chance. But we're kidding ourselves, we know we're lying to ourselves that there is a God. We know there is a God. And he says, no liars will enter the, into the kingdom of heaven. And we've all lied. But there is good news, and that is what I want to tell you about Newcastle. Be in the desperate hope that you will hear and receive the good news that you will have eternal life. Because it's a terrifying thing. I don't know you, but I care enough to tell you that if you die and you stand before God, you will go into eternity without God. You will go into eternity into hell where the wrath of God is poured out upon you. And that terrifies me, Newcastle. So much so that I'm, I'm bothered enough to travel 20 miles to come here to tell you. Receive Jesus. Whoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. That's the good news. Whoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. And there is only one person that's going to save you and that's God himself. And God sent his one and only beautiful, wonderful son, Jesus Christ. And he died on that cross. And he died because the wages of sin is death. He paid for your sin in his life's blood. That if you trust, if you repent, turn away from your wicked ways, Newcastle. Turn away from the crimes against God that you've done. And you put your trust in him, you will have eternal life. It's a promise. 
There is no other way, there is no other religion, no other person going to save you. Your neighbour, your mum, your best friend isn't going to be there when you stand before God. There is only one name by which you can be saved and that's through Jesus Christ. If you put your trust in him, you will have eternal life.